Call the December 12, 2016, USD 350 Board of Education meeting in order. Uh, welcome the visitors we have. Uh, any additions or changes to the agenda? I have none. Entertain a motion to approve the agenda. Mr. President, I move the board approve the agenda as presented. Second. Let's move and second the board approve the agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Uh, consent agenda is in front of you. Uh, nothing to note in particular. Uh, I did include some notes on the financial reports to help maybe give you a better idea of what's there and why it's there. So, nothing of note to report on that. But. Okay. Entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Okay. Move and seconded the board approve the consent agenda as presented. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carries 6 0. Are there any patron comments this evening? Okay, we'll move on into the business agenda. First on the list, robotics presentation by Mrs. Seekies and her students. All right. As you know, we uh, created a robotics class this year. This is our first year for it. The foundation donated $5,000 to help us uh, with the cost of, of that. And uh, it's, it's always fun to go in and watch. It's uh, uh, I'm excited about it, but I think they're more excited about it. Anything you want to share to start out with about the um. program? <clears throat> I, it has been more than I expected it to be. Um, I was excited to begin with um, to be able to teach the class, but it has really taken on a momentum of its own that I think is really exciting. Um, of course, we're covering the STEM principles, um, science, technology, engineering, and math. We're covering a lot of our our mathematic core principles, um, problem solving, perseverance, attending to precision, making arguments, critiquing others. And I think that what surprised me the most and pleased me is how many soft skills, um, employability skills, I think that the kids are, are learning. Um, and the troubleshooting practice is just incredible. <coughs> but I don't want to steal all the things that the kids have to talk to you about. So um, what we have planned um, is actually similar to the presentations we did for the elementary kids. No offense. So, <laughs> you know, hey, if it works for a little guy, it'll work for a big guy. Um, I have uh, my kids in groups um, here in the other room, and I'm going to rotate you through uh, each of the groups. So you'll probably be in pairs. That way you can have a little bit more personal interaction, personal conversation with these kids. Um, each group has a different topic that they're going to present to you. Um, and I'm planning on you to spend between three and four minutes with each group. And I'll, I'll tell you when it's time to <coughs> okay. um, ask them a lot of questions. They do have um, a brief presentation for you, what they want you to know um, about the program, what they've done so far, and what they want to do. And so, yeah, talk to them, ask them questions. These are a great bunch of kids. Um, I've got sophomores through seniors in the class. Um, and again, we'll, if it's all right, we'll just head to the community room and divide you guys up. Um, so I think I have four groups in there. So how do we want to divide up? Yeah, we can have one group. Mr. Knight, do you want to go through too? Okay, so Mr. Knight can be another group. and. I mean, yeah, you guys come on in and we'll, we'll just get you in a group and we'll rotate you through. Um, and I'm going to use my phone for the timer. I'm not texting. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, I like now it's set to 50 centimeters. This was like code we had here. 
Stars and we need to take them, put them over the other part of the field, okay. and then score some points. So it's the setting on as well. This one will be a good computer, but the bigger robot, where it was, or that it is, a bigger claw and everything. So it can pick up more items. So I'm going to be talking to you guys about the arena and the importance it has with what we like with what we're doing. So there's two different sides of the arena. There's the red alliance and the blue alliance. The red alliance is a um, like the red alliance and the blue alliance. They're both completely random. They're kind of like um, like a round robin. Like each person is with a different person from a different team, and it changes each time you go into into turn. And so, a little bit of stuff about the arena. There's 20 stars in total, and here's a star. And they're set up on the fence in the back line in the, the far zone. There's two different zones. This is the far zone, and then there's the near zone. The near zone is worth less points, far zone is more points. And the cubes are like, like big, blocky bean bags, kind of. And the, if you get them in the far zone, they're worth four, where the, the stars are only worth two in the far zone. And so then, let me just. Uh, 44. 
that's just kind of showing you that's just showing you the points for the stars and then that's points for the cubes but uh, basically the object is to have more cubes and stars on the other side than on your side and so after you get like after like once the ground starts you have a thing called you can do a high hang or a low hang low hang gets four points for your team a high hang gets 12 points for your team but you have to do it within the, the two minute period and your wheels have to be for the low hang your wheels have to be a quarter of an inch off the ground and for a high hang it has to completely clear the barrier that like we have and so once the round starts, there's um, each uh, robot is required to have a loading star. So you have to put the, the star anywhere you can on your robot. Normally you want to put it where you're going to launch it or uh, put it over the fence. And then it, what starts is called the autonomous mode. The autonomous, mo autonomous means like without uh, driver control. So it's complete, like completely made from the code that you put into the robot and um, that like, it moves on its own. And so after the 15 seconds of the autonomous period, um, whichever team has the most stars and stuff gets a total of 24 points for the autonomous mode which can like, is a big difference if you get it down. So after the autonomous mode is the, the driver control. There you go. Is the driver control. And we have these remotes, and I'm sure you probably saw them somewhere else, but we have those remotes and that allows us to control a robot using code that we've implemented in to tell, so let's say like, it's like a video game, we move a joystick, the robot moves. So, and, that's about it. Um, we're also required to have license plates for our robots, and they have to be able to flip from red side to blue side, depending on which alliance we're on, so that way the score, or the refs know like, what we're doing. But, so, and how heavy are these? They're actually quite heavy. They're so, even like, heavier than? Yeah. And They're really hard to get over unless you have the proper bot. So there's like just things flying all the time? Oh yeah, so, all the time. So. Thank you. So, I'm going to show you about the remote today, and once all those lights turn green, I can show you how it moves. But one side, one joystick controls one side, the other joystick controls the other side. Going back and forth, or move the arm up and down, and walk up and close. And, you want to talk tell them about the Yeah. So the keys, they're just like Bluetooth. They just communicate and tell each other what to do and send the message through. And um, there's a thing called programming and coding. And you have to program it so that it will work with a buddy. And this makes it so that someone can just drive the wheels and someone can use just the clock. It's easier doing that when you're in a competition because you don't have to think about both of them. Okay, so all of this is done by coding. And if you want to look right here, this is code we wrote or copied and pasted from other code that we found online. And it tells the robot and the joystick what to do. So I'm going to download it to the robot real quick. This is a different code that was on there before, so it's going to be different results. And now, mine, my joystick controls the wheel, Harry's controls the arm. And it's a single joystick instead of double now. And 
with coding, there's like almost infinite possibilities to what you could code for, they could do. And do they, uh, you get to come into the competition that's already knowing exactly what you're planning on, or do they give you, do they give you the time to figure yeah. it out while you're there? Yeah, not, not you, much time you can come in about an hour early when you're there, but otherwise you probably need to have a bit a good robot built before and and then maybe some code for it, you know. But you can always build a little bit while you're there and code a little bit. And you know, it's about the arena it's standard, so mm -hmm. you know going in exactly what it's gonna be like. So yeah. it's just a matter of who builds the better robot. <laughs> and are there certain are there certain items that you have to use when you build it or is it just kind of whatever you want to make? I think it's mostly whatever you want to make. It has to be um, within an eighteen by eighteen by eighteen cube in size. So okay. that's about that's one of the only specifications you have to have a battery, you have to have a backup battery, a couple things you have to have. How uh, how strong are those arms? Like, are they really? Not much. Well, this one is just pretty flimsy because it's just one bar and one motor. If you had one that had, you know, a bunch of reinforced bars and more motors, it'd be a lot stronger. Yeah, have you seen that at a competition or anything? Oh yeah. Huge. Yeah. Yeah. One that picked up like this beanbag thing, those cubes. Well, those are pretty heavy. Our robot could even pick them up, but they were just tossing them over the fence. So. Yeah, but I can't even pick up like a water bottle. Not very much. Empty full. full. It'll just. It might. Alright, close it. Okay. It falls over. Mm -hmm. Um, we are in a stage of rebuilding after we had our claw bot and we used it to learn how to run the different uh, programs and learn how to code and use the sensors and now we're trying to build a robot that will be effective in a, a competition. Um, so this is our design and we have the base here which is this is the beginnings of that. Um, we just started building it today. And then this part will be upright sitting on top of the base. And this is an extension of the claw that will be on there to pick up the stars and cubes in the game. Um, Derek. Um, it's really the main purpose of all this. The reason we're re rebuilding is um, really to hope that it will be a better robot than what this is. Um, it's really, in this competition, it's more effectiveness um, on how much you can pick up. It's just, it needs to be able to do a whole lot. Um, and the way we're going to be able to do that is just making it completely from scratch and um, coming in up with our own ideas. Uh, so we drew this with a bunch of... Uh, from it's kind of inspired by some of the robots we saw they saw in Heston. Um, their, their program has been at for like six years, um, so they've got a lot of good ideas. And um, they allowed me to take a few pictures of their robots, and I've been able to, and we've been able to uh, make a, a good, solid plan to hopefully make a more effective robot. And a couple of the things. Um, with the 45 degree angle wheels, um, it'll actually make it be able to turn a little bit easier and then that robot could. And, and then the other thing, we have six motors attached to um, the, uh, the arm that goes up and down, which will give it some throwing power that this thing doesn't have at all. It can barely pick up this stuff. So. Um, that's a couple of the big improvements from this design. Do you, are you limited as far as what you can use? Like, are they like doing you certain parts of like kits or anything? Yeah, or the yeah. VEX it has to be a VEX kit. Um, there's like there's like some like master kit or something that you're not allowed to use, but um, but I mean, we've we've been able to troubleshoot a lot. 
and it seemed to work, but now, like, now it's just getting to the point of how we're going to make this work with what we have. Um, yeah, that's what it's come down to. And we've actually already borrowed two pieces from another group, because in our kit we only had two of these pieces, and we needed four for our design, so we kind of, we don't have a lot of stuff, but... Yeah, that's one way that that's kind of limiting. But. Thank you. Okay. This is our robot. We forgot the battery, so we can't show you exactly what it does. Okay. But it uh, moves back and forth like this because it has omnidirectional wheels and sideways like this for the competition. That's how we wanted it, so it can be easier to move with the competition. With it. Uh, we're going to focus on the programming side. So this is the program that we use. This is on Robot C. Up at the top, we have each of the motors on the computer. It corresponds with a motor linked to the computer's cortex, or brain. And then, again, to the controller. So we program, we tell each uh, motor or sensor what to do down here. And a program. One of them we have is autonomous, which is where we program, we write a program, and then the robot does that program without any interaction from the joystick. Yeah. And uh, with the, the program part of it, this is our program for the uh, our uh, competition that we had at Heston and with our uh, other robot. I don't know if we had a picture of it. Uh, and we took our robot and all these, and this program we had wasn't right for the program for competition for the Heston, so we had to change our program to the competition mode for Heston, which we had to do a lot of troubleshooting because it all didn't fit correctly in the Heston's competition mode for that. And uh, so we just learned how to uh, cope with that and how to, like, the uh, obstacles were in our way, so we had to overcome this troubleshooting. Writer code. Like, Are there specific guidelines as far as what code you can use or what you oh. can do in each competition, or is it just pretty standard or is it just whatever you want to do? I mean, you can code it any way you want for the competition part of it. It's just when you uh, put in your uh, variables, you might want to put something in that makes sense, like left left tire, right tire, something like that. I mean, you can put any like any variable in it to where you push a button and does a weird move and something else like backs up and goes somewhere else. For this year, I, from what we can tell, you can do anything as long as you stay on your side. It's divided in two sides this year, which is new. We didn't know that, but you used to be able to interact with the other robots. Um, that's something that we took out of robot the class and could apply to real life though was the troubleshooting part. So every time we'd write the code, we would have a list of errors build up at the bottom that we'd have to go and find each one and then figure out what was wrong with it. We found out that um, the errors aren't a stopping spot. When you fail, you have to figure out what you failed at, get up, fix it, and then go on until the next time you fail. And hopefully you overcome that. What we plan on for the future of this robot is we're going to have like a scissor lift yeah, where we can lift this up and then pushes the stars over and also the, I think we're going to try and make it where it grabs a cube and throws a cube across so we can get more points that way. How many motors do you have on this right now? We have we have four motors right now, the one, two, one, two, three, and four, these four motors control each wheel, so we have to program each of these motors to go when we push a single, and in these movements on the control, it's going to move one of these. Is there like a maximum number of certain components you can have? Um, we have a certain amount of slots we can put it in, and that's basically the max. But we can't, we can't do the... Twelve is the max amount of motors. You can have twelve motors on a competition robot, unless you're going to use pneumatics, which are... Uh, they count them as motors, so you can have up to two pneumatics, and then ten motors, or you can have twelve motors and no pneumatics. And the, of the other uh, robots you were seeing, 
that there's a wide variety of different combinations of things? Yeah. There's some that will have like we saw one where it threw literally it went back up and grabbed it and then like had a uh, had like uh, rubber bands or something on it and then it flung it across the whole arena and other ones would have huge claws and grab them and lift it up and threw them over and then there's some like, like a little dump truck and pick them up and then flip them over like that and there's a, a variety of them. And then we had, there were some that were just flat like this and just push the stars under the uh, fence thing. So you just go like that. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Opportunity to talk to you. So, yeah, any questions? Did you enjoy the class? Yeah. Is it what you expected? And actually went over what we expected. Yeah. How many of you have uh, been in? in Mississippi's class outside of the school day to work on robots. There was one evening, it was 7 o'clock, the junior high basketball meeting. These guys were in there working away. Yeah, they come in during my plan period, LS, whenever they can. They were not working on Algebra 2. They were, <laughs> they were working on their robots. And my point there is that it's exciting. What well, what are you learning? A lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, to start with, we learned how to program. Uh, I think some of us knew of the basics, but we didn't really know how to apply it to anything. Right. So the robots let us apply it to something and actually see it physically do something. Right. Um, yeah, I didn't even know like what a robot code was or how to do it or anything, so right. I'm pretty much started with no knowledge of anything about robots. I think one of you making troubleshooting. Yeah, we learned yeah. about it. I like that's good for you guys. A lot of uh, troubleshooting and how to come back after you made a bunch of mistakes and have a bunch of red X's over your screen. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard it in two different groups of talking about building their robot and troubleshooting the mechanics of it, and also when you said that you know, when you have an error in your code, you, that's not the end. It's the start of your next problem to fix. So there's troubleshooting there, too. Do you guys have the proper tools and equipment to compete with the other schools? Um, we have a meeting on Friday to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> So, and, and, um, and the kids are the ones that are prepared to meet with Mr. Meyer and go through their uh, wish list, the items that they would want, and they have justification for those items and the expense and, and how it'll not only benefit them, but in the upcoming year. So, um, they've got that together, and, and they're going to do that meeting, and I'll sit in my classroom and hope for the best. <laughs> Has it been a challenge to teach? I've learned a lot, um, and I've made a ton of mistakes, but I feel like we have, we have created a really good culture that, I mean, that's just how the day goes, and we move forward, and if you make a mistake that affects other people, you say, man, I'm sorry I dropped the ball, and we move forward. Um, it's stressful. I mean, when, when the learning curve is this high, it is stressful, and the competition was stressful. Um, I realized I'd never tried to fix code in a stressful situation where there's a tight time frame. It's a, it's a whole other ball game. Um, I'll do a lot better job next year, um, but I think it has been good for them for their future, whether or not they touch another robot again, to have that responsibility. And if you mess up, your teacher might not know how to fix it either. I mean, your boss might not know how to fix it either, and that's okay. Sometimes you just got to dig in and figure it out. So um, I've learned a lot, Derek. <laughs> I really have, in, in a good way, for the most part. Anything else you wanted to share with us that 
and then cover in there. Or... It's fun. <laughs> Can any of you see this as a potential career? Yeah. What career path would you see this helping you with? Is NASA, you can go into NASA and do robotics. Robotics? Uh -huh. Computer engineering, the programming part of it. Right. Also, for like companies and stuff, you can program the robots that like manufacture stuff. Right. Uh, the jobs that require teamwork, because it's, there's a lot of teamwork in NASA. Um, and that's a lot of ball game. And I, I really like the way Vex sets up the competitions. Your alliance is with people you probably have never met. And all of a sudden, you've got to pair with these people from another town, another school, and you've got five minutes to get it together, make your game plan, and go. You know, there's, there's no time to be awkward or shy. It's let's talk and get this figured out. Um, I know that's one comment they came home with was, that the teams that were that were good communicators made a huge difference. So, I, I mean, I just think it's a great, great way to set it up. It's not school against school. It's you're going to work with whoever you get paired to work with, and you're going to do it now. <laughs> uh, it's learning like this that's going to help in any profession, mm -hmm. communication, the teamwork. They mentioned that. But it's uh, and it's fun. And they've done everything I've asked them to do, mostly without complaint. Hey, let's present to the elementary. All right, we're on it. Hey, you guys are talking to the board. All right, we're on it. Hey, you're pitching to Mr. Meyer for the money. All right, we're on it. So that's great. So how many total robots do you take to competition? Uh, it just depends on how many students that we have. We have most of the teams are teams of three. And it depends on just how many we take. It also depends on how many functioning robots we have. Okay. Like Heston, they brought, um, they have in their stock, they have like, what, 54 robots? We took two to Heston. We had two that were willing and, and like ready to go. Let's give it a try. Um, hopefully at our next competition we could maybe take four. That's my goal anyway, is to have four that are, that are ready to go. Um, and again, give it a try. So do our best with what we've got. Thank you, Mrs. Seekies. Yeah, thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate the opportunity. And I've got this in my report, but we did get a grant through ESDAC to uh, help us purchase some kits for the elementary robotics for next year. So you guys are going to miss out on that. <laughs> Hopefully, spur some interest in that in the younger grades. Mm -hmm. Get some of that learning in our in our lower grades. So. Thank you for being here. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank, Thank you. you for having us. Great job. Negotiations team action item. Uh, last year, Derek and Barry headed that negotiation. Are there any volunteers for this year? I'm okay with being on it again. I'll do another. Derek, Derek, there, all right. Uh, entertain a motion to approve the negotiations team. Mr. President, I move that Derek and uh, Darren are on the negotiating team for this coming contract negotiation. Second, yeah. So we move and second that the board approve Derek and Darren as the board's negotiation negotiating team for the upcoming contract negotiations. All in favor, aye. Aye. Opposed, nay. Motion carried, 6 0. Thank you, Derek. Yeah. Item 3 Capital Outlay Budget. Uh, I threw a bunch of information at you in the, in the packet. I'll explain uh, this. What we're talking about is just a working budget. You know, we established a budget. We published it in the paper and all that. We have 
that gives us the authority to spend it. This is what we're talking about just with our working budget, what we expect to spend. So first of all, page 23, when you're supporting documents, that's what's up here, shows how we ended last year. When we set up the budget for this year, it was uh, in the spring, and uh, we didn't know some things. So this is how we finished uh, on our expenses. We had revenue from uh, our grant for the track, and we transferred bond money. We had money donated for doors and the track timing system. So those were taken off the expenses, if that makes sense. So um, on page 24 and 25 is just those numbers broken down a bit and what we purchased, uh, what that money went to. Uh, any questions about those expenses from 15-16 when we finalize the books? Uh, page 26 starts... Um, <clears throat> The left column is what our budget was established uh, last spring, what we've had for expenses this year, and then the right column, adjusted budget, is what I would recommend that we do. Now, money's tight, why would we be doing that? Well, a few things have come up. One, uh, the highlighted ones on the specifics, page 27, the uh, Chromebooks, we purchased those with our federal grant, uh, so we didn't need to do that out of capital outlay. The E-rate computer infrastructure, we did not do that this year. We'll hold off. Uh, furniture, I anticipate getting a little bit more. Um, HVAC maintenance improvements, I'd like to bump that up just a bit. Um, our football lights, uh, this is including our uh, insurance check, so you can add 38000 to that for the insurance. but. That was an expense that we did not expect when we set up this budget. Um, and the fire alarm was actually uh, spent out of last year's funds. Back up to last year. You see here the summer of 15 we did one the second phase and then the summer of 16 we did the third phase. It just happened to be that's the trick with our capital outlay budget is July 1 we end, but we do a lot of projects over the summer. So whenever we sign a contract, it depends on which year it's in. So the money's a wash. It's just uh, uh, which year we spend it in. So anyway, that fire alarm was taken out of last year's budget, so we don't need it for this year. And flooring, uh, because of a, a few things, uh, we had more money to do uh, from the computers. Uh, we did more flooring than we anticipated uh, than we had planned on doing. So page 29 shows you how what we set up. This is what we anticipated when we set up this budget. An ending balance of 322. Revenue of 180. We weren't uh, sure whether we would get that uh, additional state aid. <clears throat> so we planned on Spending down to 220, which is lower than we want to be. So we actually ended with a higher balance. We're also going to have more revenue. Uh, and then with the added expenses, we're still going to be better off on an ending balance. So, page, uh, we're comfortable with it. Page 20. Uh, 26 is what I would recommend for the adjusted budget. So, lots of information. And again, this is our working budget. If we go over a bit in one area, it just means we spend down our cash a little bit. So, we don't have a lot of wiggle room uh, to do a lot of other things with. We do need some more desks. third grade. So any questions? How do you feel about it? I feel comfortable with where we're at. I, I feel a lot better than 
when we stepped up last spring, uh, we ended the year with more money than I anticipated, you know, after our audit. Uh, that was all finalized. And uh, with our additional state aid, we did get more revenue, and we will get more revenue this year. So I feel better about this bottom line ending balance. Uh, this year, and we were able to do the football lights that we were anticipating. Uh, Are we for sure getting the extra revenue from the state? Uh, sort of, yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. They won't change the law to take that away. Okay. Um, there is a chance in the end they could reduce some of our funding, but uh, that part of it I don't see going away because that hurt the court case. Okay, any questions for Mr. Meyer? What about hearing that concerns? Are we how how would come that? That's a software issue. Um, the hardware issues that we would need to fix would be getting some hot spots in certain areas, but the trouble we were having was a the new filter. And there was a bug in the software that uh, was a vendor issue that they have fixed in the last couple of weeks since Thanksgiving. I think it's been pretty seamless. So I think we're good, in good shape there. We will, uh, uh, Mr. Watts is talking to me about a server backup. Right now we're doing it uh, you know, on, on external hard drives that isn't really the way to do it. But talking, well, the quote he gave me was 19000 which is as much as the server cost us, you know, four years ago when we put that in. So, so we will have a significant cost there, but I sure hope we can do a lot better than 19000 for that. So, uh, But I don't plan on that out of this year's budget. We need to approve this. Yeah, I'd ask you to. It's not. That's right. Yes. I approve the board approved the cap capital outlay, but it's presented. Second. So moving and seconded, the board approved the capital outlay budget as presented. Is there any discussion? Not all in favor, aye. Aye. Those may. Motion <coughs> carries 6 0. Board policy updates, information, discussion items. Uh, the, this is a separate document. KSB updates these twice a year. Uh, a lot of the things are minor legal changes based on changes in law. Some of these, uh, the No Child Left Behind Act was updated, uh, amended. It's the ESSA, Every Student Succeeds Act. Uh, some things were changed. You'll notice there's some... Uh, changes in relation to that. Um, so on this document, the attorneys spell out what the code, what the policy is, why they recommend changing it, and some of them are, you should do this, or we recommend doing it, or this is, uh, this is according to the new law, so you should change it. There's two, the DP and uh, EE. We already have a food service account policy. So I knew this was coming down the, the pike and we just needed to be able to deal with it in a structured way. But uh, about how we let people charge below a zero balance um, and what we do in that case, uh, what we do to feed the kid and, and those things. That these two policies, I need to go back and review to see if we want to just take this and implement it into those two policies or how we want to handle that. But the others, I didn't see any issues with the wording. So all of the policies are outlined after their explanation here on these tables. And the document has, you know, what they're changing, adding in some wording. A lot of it is meaningless except to 
an attorney. But. So you can review those and I'll have solid recommendations for which ones to change. I don't anticipate it being much different than what's there. So I've gone through them already. But next meeting we'll approve them. Any questions? Mr. All right. Item five, second semester senior release. I uh, do have two applications. Um, I recommend one for approval. Uh, one student is wanting to work for family and uh, a couple of days a week. It's really been our practice that we're very leery of working for family. We don't want kids just getting out of school, uh, going home, um, and uh, only a couple of days a week is difficult to deal with from a scheduling perspective. We don't want to set that precedent. Uh, so the one we'd recommend, uh, Troy Devine is going to be working for a local farm and he works for now and will be leaving the last hour of the day. So I recommend uh, we approve that list. Troy Devine. Okay. Mr. President, I move the board approve Troy Devine for second semester senior release is presenting. Second. Let's move and second the board approve Troy Devine. For second semester senior release. All in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Motion carried 6 0. Communication, board member activities reports. Um, Carl? No, don't have any. <coughs> okay, Debbie? Special Ed Co op um, meeting last month and then uh, attending basketball. There. I don't have anything to report either this time. Uh, there is an open house Friday afternoon at the special ed co op in Brown if anybody happens to be there. When? This Friday afternoon. Friday afternoon? Mm -hmm. I mean, let me check and see what time it is. Email <coughs> yeah, it's very wide. Very okay. If you just happen to be in print. <laughs> All right, administrative reports. Mr. Mark? Uh, Mr. Olive was unable to be here. He's at the junior high game tonight, uh, supervising over there, watching his own kids. So and I'll give his report. Uh, you can see our concerts coming up here uh, Thursday and Monday, uh, this week and next week. I mentioned the robotics. Uh, we got a good report on that. Um, and we talked about the network filtering. So, Mr. Ellen wanted to report that we're in good shape there. Um, the high school boys finished first in the tournament this weekend, and the girls finished third. Who, who made that um, alternate team? Um, Tara Nelson and Bailey Burns okay. and Chase Fisher and Jorge Caleros, the boys, and then uh, Cole Kinnaman was the most valuable player. Okay. Like, get everybody. So I played well, beat a tough Spearville team. Um, and then we've got our last day coming up next Tuesday with kids. Now on my report, uh, standards-based grading, I keep putting this on here because I think it's going to be something that uh, we will have a lot of questions on when we implement this. Uh, just a quick reminder, instead of using ABC grades, we're going to have a, a list of topics, curriculum that kids are to learn, and then we report to parents how they did on that. I don't get a lot of good out of my kid got a B in first grade math. Well, one parent might say, oh my gosh, my kid's got a B. That's terrible. My kid needs to be getting A's. Another parent might say, oh my gosh, my kid's getting a B. That's fantastic. Uh, so what does that even mean? 
but it's hard for parents to understand that. I think the older the kids get, the harder it's going to be to use that standards-based grade card. And, uh, you know, imagine getting your kid's algebra report card that was a list of all the topics and how they were doing on it. First question is going to be, is that an A? <laughs> so, you know, we won't be pushing it all the way to high school for sure, uh, and that's when it gets pretty controversial, I guess, but uh, we're still working on that for next year. I mentioned the elementary robotics grant. Uh, Mr. Smith will be teaching that, how we work that into the curriculum, whether it's a separate class or part of science class. Uh, I'm not sure uh, how we'll do that. And, uh, I don't know. You know. The competitions would probably need to be separate. You know, we wouldn't be taking every single kid in fifth and sixth grade. So it might be an extracurricular thing, uh, teaching some of the concepts. So we'll work that out over, over the next few months, determine how we want to do that. But I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, we're working on a book study. Uh, you win in the locker room first. It's really a coaching book. It's Mike Smith uh, used to be the coach of the Falcons, Atlanta Falcons, and then John Gordon is one of my favorite author authors. He has some good books out there. But... There's a few teachers reading that, and then we, uh, it's hard to get everybody together, so we have this discussion board. Part of our Google platform, we have communities uh, where these folks can, we can just get on there, kind of like a social media. It's just a closed group, and we can get on there and uh, post comments about, uh, about a chapter. And see Mrs. Emery is posted here and then we can comment on on what she's posted you know have a discussion there without having to get everybody together and talk about it so just another way that we learn from each other try to improve what we're doing yeah Dr. Fence yeah. oh. <laughs> that's a good picture <laughs> Budget and legislative update. Um, the legislative situation seems. Uh, oh, I missed one, didn't I? Uh, KISA. This is our accreditation system. I did want to include uh, this document here. This shows <coughs> what the process looks like. What does it mean to become accredited? We have our district site council, our building site council, so each elementary building and that high school building have uh, a few parents, community members, uh, and teachers, and we get together quarterly and just discuss what's going on, uh, get suggestions for improvement. So this process really takes those groups and focuses the efforts. Uh, so this document shows you in the five-year process of becoming accredited, what does each group do? So for the building leadership team, that'd just be staff members. Year one, they conduct a needs assessment and review. The building site council includes the community members and parents review that, that information that staff has collected. Same thing for the district. The district staff, they conduct an assessment, see what we need to work on, and then the site council gets together and talks about that. We've really combined those all into one group. Uh, and then the board would be involved by reviewing the progress that's going on. There's an outside validation team, which would be people we select from different schools, maybe universities, that they review what we're doing for our improvement plans and ultimately, ultimately, they provide a recommendation to the state whether we should be accredited or not. I won't go through all four years, or all five years here, but we review the needs, we set goals, we implement those goals, um, and then in the end we review the progress on those goals as making us better. So that's the five-year process. Right now we're, we're training in what they're calling zero-year Next year would be the first year of the five-year cycle. So that's what this is all about. This implementation plan represents 
you know, for us, we've got our site councils together. We've already been discussing things. So it doesn't make sense for us to start in year one and get a team together. We're already there. We're already doing it. Uh, we've also set building goals. Uh, so that's a year two. So really, we probably fit into year three. We're off and running. We're ready to go. So the state would like as many school districts as possible to start in a different year so we don't have everybody trying to be accredited in the fifth year. Uh, so if we would start in year three next year, the following year would be year four, and then the year after that we would be, we would have our review year. Okay. So not a lot for you to do now, not a lot for our staff to do now, we're just learning about the process a little bit at a time. Now to the fun stuff, our state's budget. I did see a tweet from the governor today that there will have a balanced budget presented in January. I uh, can't wait to see <laughs> how okay. that happens. Here's the general fund profile. Uh, this is after revenue estimates have been changed. This is your actual from last year. How we ended the year, 37 million. Uh, this is updated as of the last revenue estimates in November. Uh, adjusted the revenue, adjusted expenditures that are needed. Um, and this is the budget gap that needs to be closed, $349 million, which is quite a bit less than next year, anticipated $583 million. So that's a problem that needs to be worked out. Um, you know, I, I talked to Representative Lewis and our new Senator Taylor. Uh, I guess she's not Senator yet. She hasn't been sworn in, but uh, I talk to them frequently, and they're, that's their task. This is the school finance part of things is is secondary. This is uh, fixing their the budget gap is their their primary problem, their primary issue that they need to deal with right now. Um, how does this affect our budget? Uh, are we going to see cuts this year? Is what's in my mind. Uh, the possibilities there to close that big of a gap when K-12 education is, is half of the state general fund. Uh, I've heard that education won't K-12 education won't be cut, but it's hard to believe that that's the case. Uh, if we looked at a 10% cut to our state aid, it would be $230,000. Uh, seems like a huge number. It is. That's a good majority of our cash balance that we would have. Our spendable cash balance at the end of the year. Um, you know, a 5% cut would be a little over 100000 Three percent cut, seventy thousand. Uh, so those things are running through my mind, and how do we make those cuts? And we're talking cut to this year's budget. We've already, we've already got spent, committed in contracts. Uh, so I don't think we will see that type of cut this year. But looking at these figures, it's hard to. Hard to believe that we won't see something happen. So it worries me quite a bit. Uh, any questions? Uh, things you've heard you'd like me to answer? We'll know a lot more by the middle of January. When is the other decision supposed to be made about uh, um, the school finance? Um, before the end of the year, okay. uh, the Supreme Court, uh, but that's just a guess. Not my guess, somebody that's smarter than me. But that information will be there before the next stuff? And it should be, but the there's no telling. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The Supreme Court's not very good about letting on to when they're going to release it. It'll happen on a Friday. At 4.05 in the afternoon, probably. Yeah. 
how they usually work. So maybe this Friday. Um, so that complicates things quite a bit. Um, random drug testing. Uh, this is something we had talked through last year and we're kind of in the middle of determining whether it's something we thought we should do, there's the right thing to do. Um, I recommended that we put it off for a year. Um, so it's time to start those discussions again. Um, so just informally, is this something that we should pursue uh, that the board would like me to uh, bring before the board again uh, further information and discussion? Not asking for your decision if it's something we should do, but is it something? How often, how often is the drug dog and is your search just going on? Five times a year. Is that enough? <clears throat> oh, I think so. Uh, I think the threat of them showing up at any time is, uh, does just as much as when the dog is here. Um, frankly, I consider it a su success when the dog doesn't find anything, but. Um, it's limited to, you know, you can't search uh, the, per the person. I'd like to clear us forward. Okay. Pleasure. Okay. Much <clears throat> consensus. Okay. We'll get more information together and uh, work on that. Uh, the KSB convention, I've got a few items I want to report to you. Um, Barb was going to have a report for you. She said that the, uh, the uh, delegate convention, delegate assembly was the shortest on record. I told him. So. In attendance? Or? No, no, no. Uh, short time time. Time. Yeah. 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 So there was a pretty good turnout. There was a, it was a good convention. Uh, I went... Uh, uh, Friday, they had a superintendent's day. Um, one of the presentations was on, uh, you know, telling our story as a school. You know, we hear a lot of things about those teachers' unions are destroying public education. And, you know, our story needs to be, teachers aren't the problem, they're going to be the solution to uh, helping our public education. The uh, Southern Baptist organization at some point had a, I don't think they voted it in, but uh, something in their constitution, that's not the right word, but their legislative platform that uh, we want to, we don't want our kids going to those godless government schools, and our story needs to be known, they're, you know, they're caring community schools, it's not, it's our school, it's not and the achievement gap, you always hear that the achievement gap is widening uh, from the poor kids to the rich kids. And, uh, you know, how we frame that, there is a, a learning gap. And poverty is a big deal. And it hurts. So the learning is because kids come from poverty. And what are we doing about that? Not that schools are screwing it up because uh, we're letting the, uh, some fail. Uh, and here's one that. I really stuck with me that, you know, we always hear this, America's schools are failing on the international tests. Um, um, it's a great point. You look at the data, it's, it's true. Um, but we haven't, we're not doing worse. We're actually doing better than we have compared to international competitors. And it made the point, um, you know, you think about it. Our astronauts and our Nobel Prize winners, you know, we, we do a great job in this nation, and this is one way to think about it. If you, the higher you are on the, on the list, uh, you know, the higher your quality of life, the lower, you know, the lower quality of life. Well, if you consider, um, I don't know, Indonesia, they do very well. And they focus only on testing. Well, they score very high, but what's their quality of life like when they funnel kids into specific careers that they need to be, that the government says they should be in? 
well, we fit in the middle because we focus on a lot of other things besides test scores. And the opposite end of that is that third world countries, kids are starving and education is not a, not a priority and scores are low, but so is their quality of life. So just another way to, to think about it. Um, so it just made me think of how we tell our story. Um, another presentation was from the I Love You Guys Foundation. Uh, this was a school shooting in uh, Colorado. Uh, not uh, Columbine, but it was a few years after that. Uh, the shooter took over a classroom, walked right into the school, and we stopped him. Uh, took hostages in a classroom, uh, ended up letting some go. Uh, anyway, this guy's daughter was killed. Uh, the gunman, they breached the classroom, the gunman shot his daughter. Um, so now he's working on this foundation to uh, uh, better prepare schools and businesses, universities uh, for emergencies. So this, what I included here is a standard response protocol. Very similar to what we have in our crisis plan. It just simplifies it a lot. Uh, what we do in the case of uh, there's a danger inside the building, what do we do? Well, we lock down, lock the doors out of sight. Um, if there's something outside that's a danger, what do we do? We don't say code blue, we don't say uh, John F. Kennedy is in the building or whatever. We don't do code words, we just tell it like it is. And uh, so I, I think we'll implement some of this. It's all free. Um, one thing that stuck with me on this, uh, after the Sandy Hook shooting, uh, there was significant research done to review uh, school violence incidents around the country, <clears throat> they found that there was no single time that uh, <coughs> a door, a locked door was breached and kids were harmed. You know, we always think if there's a gunman or somebody wanting to do harm, they're going to get through the door if they really want to. But there's been no incidents where a locked door has been breached and kids have been harmed. So, you know, locking the door matters in a situation like that. Um, now there's other ways to think about it. That uh, you know, If there's a danger in the shop area and uh, the fourth grade classroom clear on the other end, if we know there's no danger, we can get them out. It's not, we don't just huddle kids in the corner and wait to be shot. Um, but it is a simplified process. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, so I really appreciated uh, that presentation. I did hear some facility planning uh, discussions. <coughs> and uh, <coughs> KASB has uh, an insurance specialist. They have property insurance, um, work comp insurance, health insurance, student accident insurance. And <clears throat> we've looked into them before. Uh, but I listened to a presentation on them that they can come in and even just do a market check. If we don't want to bid it out, if we don't want to, uh, you know, we don't want to go with somebody else, but we want to check our rates and see if they're where they need to be, we can, we can do that. Uh, so, really good convention. Uh, if you guys can ever make time to get to one, uh, I'd really encourage it. Uh, Barb was with me at several of those meetings, and she went to her own meetings too. So, any questions on any of uh, that? Yeah. Do they have those um, <clears throat> to put up in the rooms? Yeah. Yeah. And you said they're free? Yeah. All free information, <clears throat> training guides. You know, it's something we don't want to spend a lot of time on. You know, the likelihood that it happens, uh, but we want to be 
you know, proactive. So Josh, you comfortable for, you know, with our school in this situation? You know? I, I am. I think we need to be reminded that people need the visitor's badges um, when they come in. You know, we get lax on that. But, you know, when parents come in and, you know, when, when Derek comes in, like, sorry, sir, you need to have a visitor's badge. Everybody knows me. But, uh, but then we, we have somebody else that we don't know, you know, that I may not know that's walking down the hallway. It's checked into the office. We just didn't give them a badge. So things like that we need to do better with. Um, I'd feel more comfortable if our north entrance, the high school entrance, was controlled uh, in some way. You know, where people have to come through the office to get into the building. Um, as far as the school shooting, you know, that's not going to stop that. The way we have the elementary entrance isn't going to stop somebody who wants to do harm. But it does keep a, you know, a step-parent that shouldn't be, or a non-custodial parent that shouldn't be taking their kid out of school. We control who gets in the building that way. But, um, our doors on the high school side, uh, one thing I mentioned is uh, the doors need to be, need to be able to lock them from the inside without a key. You have a sub, you got teachers that don't have their keys on them. If we have an incident, intruder in the building, they need to be able to lock the doors immediately. And our new doors on the elementary side, we do have that. Uh, the high school side, we don't. So that's one thing we need to update anyway, is on the list. Tonight we have the superintendent's evaluation contract, and then I have a couple other items that relate to personnel. So, twenty minutes. Twenty minutes. Okay. <coughs> Mr. President, I move that the board go into executive session to discuss <coughs> personnel matters in order to protect. Privacy of non-elected personnel with Mr. Meyer, and uh, for 20 minutes. Mm. Second. Thank you. So we move and second the board go into executive session to discuss personnel matters in order to protect the privacy of non-elected personnel with Mr. Meyer to be included. And we return to open session in 20 minutes. All in favor, aye. Aye. Those nay. Motion carried.